Hello there, Sharks. I'm Jonathan Little for PokerCoaching.com, here with James Romero. He loves a good overbet. And today, we're taking a look at a hand from a $1,500 buy-in. World Series of Poker Tournament? Yep. Deep stacked event, as you can see, we are playing two million chips deep. Do you get excited when you have two million chips, or do you not really care? No, these are great, yeah. Especially <laughs> when you start with like 30k or 40k. Yeah, that's a lot of chips. Yeah. All right, ace, three of spades. You open it up, under the gun. Are you raising ace, three of spades literally every time, 80 big blinds deep under the gun? Uh, maybe not day one, because you'll get called in six spots, uh, but definitely the last hand of the night, day two. Do you mind if you get called in six spots with ace, three of spades? Um, I guess not, but I like to play my hands uh, in later position. That's true. Would you say that you play a little bit tight in early position, and a little bit loose in late position? Um, GTO all over the place. I'll play loose <laughs> if it's a bad lineup. You'll but... GTO all over them. All right. So at the World Series, you're playing loose. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, me too. All right, you raise it up. Big blind calls. Also, 80 big blinds deep. Deep stack game. Flop comes. Jack, 7-3. Yeah. Two spades. You have the nut flush draw and the pair. Bonnet checks. Guess we bet this board often enough. Yeah. With this specific hand, I, I, I like to bet small because we don't mind if we get raised. And also, you know, sometimes I want to be able to bluff small. If you're only bluffing with a smallish size and your value bets are larger, you know, if you want to go full pot with your overpairs, uh, then you can get exploited. So I like to mix in hands like this um, so we can call a lot of flop check raises if he decides to go crazy against smaller sizes, which you'll see a lot of pros do. So, um, yeah, I, I wanted to see a raise on this flop, to be honest. You also don't care if he calls. No, and I also don't care if he calls. Right, like you you don't mind him saying in the pot no. at all. All right, you bet 26K, so tiny little fourth pot bet. Some people, well, a lot of people, literally never make a bet that is smaller than, let's say, half pots on the flop. They're either half potting it or they're potting it. They don't use these small little bets, especially when deeper, but... Check your solvers, yeah, you gotta mix it up. You gotta mix it up. Yeah. Check the solvers. Okay, you bet small opponent calls, turns a two of diamonds... And they check. Hmm. 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 So when they check call flop, they are going to have plenty of jacks and sevens. Yeah. And some draws. Um, I don't feel like we should be bluffing our hand here. I think we should be more polarized when uh, when betting turn for like pot or over betting. Uh, mixing between our strongest value hands and hands with no showdown value. And I don't think ace three makes the cut. It's actually a spot where I see a lot of... Um, Lower level players make mistakes betting through with hands like 7x or pocket 8s for large sizes. Um, it's You, you want to have a bifurcated turn betting range, so very strong hands and weaker hands. And this falls into uh, medium strength hands, so I definitely want to check here. If you have checked out my new Cash Game Masterclass at PokerCoaching.com, which goes through a lot of deep stack spots, kind of like this. It's a scenario where when you bet the flop, you're betting the flop, Pretty frequently, yeah. right? And Linear. they're going to they're fold out all their garbage, yeah. even to a small bet. So it means when they get to the turn, their range is like actually okay, right? Yeah. You have all your garbage, or a lot of your garbage. They have medium strength hands. Medium strength hands. In this scenario, on the turn where your opponent checks, you immediately went to, I want to have a lot of big bets, over bets, yeah. right? Yeah. But again, another spot where people almost never put in these big bets. But you have to realize, when you're betting turn, you're betting with your really good made hands, and right. your draws that don't really care if your opponent folds. And some complete junk hands. Yes. Don't forget those. So what would what would a complete junk hand be here? Like uh, um, King, king 5 off. suited? Yeah, I'm I know you have King 5 suited. Yeah. yeah, you are. Come on. King right. 5 suited? Sure. King 10 off suit? King 10 off. Um, king Queen off. Hands like this. Yeah. You like having an overcard so you can sporadically make the top pair, right? Yeah, sure. But also having, you know, complete non-equity from time to time is okay. It's not even, it's not even like stone non-equity, though, with the king high. Right, with the king highs, right. right. But I mean, I'm, every, I'm every hand in, in other spots. Every hand here has equity to some extent. Whatever you open on this right, flop, right, every right. hand has something. Either a gut shot or whatever. All right, so you opt to let it go check, check. So you're not betting this hand because if you bet and get raised, it's like you're not folding, but it's... Yeah, it's not, we have it's showdown not value with the three. Mm -hmm. um, it's nice to have some spades, rivers that we hit where he won't expect us to have a flush. Um, you know, checking back some spades here from time to time I think is good uh, for deception. And, you know, we have, we have a good amount of showdown value here with our three. So. When you're figuring out some spades to check back, 
are you're starting with the ace three of spades, right? Then are we going down to like ace king and ace queen and ace ten? Or are you using the weaker ones to check? Back? Yeah, so they're all going to play as mixes, and it's also going to be dependent on my table image. Uh, you know, if I had just been bet bet betting like three different hands, then maybe I play more passively with ace king, ace queen of spades because I don't expect to have as much fold equity as I would have if I hadn't played a hand in five hours. Um, so, yeah, That's, there's your answer. Mix it up. But we need some showdown value with our spades, I think, right, to, so check, to check back. So ace high spades, you know. Mm -hmm. Eight nine of spades doesn't make as much sense. Queen ten of spades does not make as much sense. Cool. All right. Check, check. River is a three. The opponent checks. And now I want to ask all of you who are watching here today, thank you for being here, by the way, what would you do in this scenario with your rivered trip threes? Trip threes just like looks pretty. Three, three, three. All right. In this spot, would you bet small, let's say, two big blinds. Would you bet medium? Let's say four big blinds. Would you pot it? Eight big blinds or would we go for the over bet? Gigantic bets. Type in how much you want. Any amount will do. Pause the video and write what you would do in the comment section below. All right. This is a spot where I have seen so many recreational players bet two big blinds because they want to get called. It's painful. It is painful. <laughs> painful. Um, if you look at the solver, not doing a whole lot of two big blind betting. No. With anything. In this spot, we're going pretty big or really big. Yeah. Right? So how do you figure out if you want to go pretty big or really big? Um, well, in this specific spot, we have the nuts and in general poker... Value in poker is derived from just betting as large as you can with your strongest value hands. That also allows you to bluff uh, more frequently. Remember, if you're betting one-tenth of the pot on the river, you have to have about 90% value. When you bet you know, 10x pot, you can have half bluffs, half value. So in poker, we want to be betting as large as we can with our value hands. Uh, and ace-3 is good here for like you know even up to 3x pot. Um, so... We want to use a large sizing, basically as large as we can get away with. Also, you know, realistically speaking, it does look like we have missed this board. I think a lot of people would barrel through with their over pairs and strongest jacks on the turns, uh, given this board. Um, so I think that he is likely to call river bets on this run out. So we should just maximize our value and bet as large as possible. Really, betting 2x pot here only makes sense with... Um, a checked back over pair or 3x. Um, and I think he will assume that we have way more bluffs in our range and could hero call us wide. So, there are a lot of potential bluffs. The question is, do you, you being you at home, you, do we actually use those bluffs? Because a lot of people literally never make an overbet with a bluff. But that's probably a big mistake, right? Yeah, it's a big mistake. You, you, want gotta to be, be, you want to be balanced in all spots, so I'll throw all different bet sizes. Right, so we already knew we were going to be betting some bluffs on the turn, but we still are going to get to the river with some no showdown value hands, right? Yeah, quite a few. Give us an example. What do you think would be a reasonable hand to check, check, turn, over bet river? It's going to be King Heiser, 8, 9, Queen, 10. It's a lot right there. Yeah. It's a whole lot of them right there. And if you compare that to the number of threes you have, there's not a whole lot of threes, and there's not a whole lot of over pairs. Right. So a problem maybe I run into. I don't know. Give me a little bit of poker coaching right now. I end up with too many bluffs on the river. You think that's a bad thing? It depends on your opponent, of course. <laughs> <laughs> that does depend on your opponent. If your opponents are going to overfold to your over bets, which I think a lot of people do, if you give someone a seven, a lot of people just fold every time. You give some people a jack, they fold every time. But... Some other people are going to call literally every time, right? Right. So, okay, so we're sitting here. Let's How say... strong is their range? What country they're from? You know, what stakes they normally play? How good they are at reading hands? All of these things matter. They do. General and tendencies. Would you say that in this scenario, you may be overbetting almost entirely for value? Uh, yeah, because it was a euro. And he, I think he's very aware of... Uh, he's very good at reading boards. And this board, I'm going to have... A, a lot of airball combos when I uh, check back on the turn. So, if your opponent's going to call, maybe we do a whole lot of overbetting with the nuts. Not so much with bluffs, right? Yeah. So yeah. we can decrease, Simple as that. decrease our bluffing frequency here. And increase the size at which we 
bet with value. Is another uh, potential solution to value bet thinner with over bets? Like, say, Absolutely. maybe we have, I don't know, like Queen, Queen Jack, Jack or something. Yeah. Yeah, so hand like Queen Jack, would we? Is it good enough to overbet? Right, and right. if you have an opponent that's always leading the river with every Jack X, all you know, down to Jack Six suited, uh, and he's only checking Seven X, then you can bet even larger with. You know, that's another reason to bet wider for value. Queen Jack, basically the nuts, then, right? Yes. So we can go for it. All right, you go for the two point something pot river bet. Yeah. Big, humongous. I'm sure many people in the comment section are saying, "Why would you do this? He's gonna fold everything." Let's see if it happens. He almost snap called as well. <laughs> when he snap calls, you're like, oh no. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. Oh, he had the eight and the seven. Hmm. Is this a good hand to hero call with? That's what I always want to ask myself in these scenarios. He probably doesn't want you to have a flush draw, right? Or he, he, he wants to not have a spade when he's calling, right? Sure. So like if, and the reason is because that's going to mean you're going to have just a few more random flush draws in your range. Probably doesn't matter if he just thinks you're overbluffing. Yeah, I mean, blockers are important, um, but only to some extent. Uh, I think the board run out in this specific end is more important. Right. If you have a paired board, it's easier for me to find bluffs. I have a larger base rate of bluffs, which means I have more bluffs available to use if I'm in an aggressive mood. I think that that <laughs> is a number one priority to examine that and then look at blockers. Uh, it's also nice that there are... The, the trips that came are trips that you're... Pretty unlikely to have. Very unlikely Right, because you like, have. don't have almost no threes. Cool. Cool spot. Would you have gotten full value like James did? I think I would have on this one. But I know a lot of people do not. They go for that small bet on the river, even a pot size bet on the river, thinking it's big, and they leave a whole pot size bet on the table. Don't be afraid to go for it. Thank you for this hand. This was fun. You're welcome. That's me for today. If you enjoyed this video, click like, click subscribe. You want people to follow you on Twitter? Sure. What's your Twitter name? Skolanskis. Who's that? Ah, forget about it. All right. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Have a good day. We'll talk to you next time.